Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, probably people will uh, still jumping in into this meeting room, uh, but I would already like to start. Uh, so good afternoon uh, to all of you uh, and welcome to the Astro Opportunity at European level. Um, with this uh, webinar, we would like to give you a broad overview of different space opportunities and funding opportunities that uh, many of us uh, will present. Um, and this is actually uh, the main aim of this webinar is to give you um, yeah, some inspiration uh, and we will uh, give you some opportunities depending on the TRL level uh, of your own company. Um, the first of all, let me... Um... The first one that will uh, represent is uh, Carla Duarte uh, from IPN uh, located in Portugal. Uh, she will uh, explain about Astropreneurs. Uh, Astropreneurs is the program that is organizing uh, this webinar and is supported uh, by the European Commission. Carla, are you ready? Yes. Hello, Luisa. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to share uh, with all of you uh, all about astropreneurs. So, as Luisa told you, I'm Carla Duarte. I've, I'm from um, IPN. We are astropreneurs, uh, an H2020 program that is now in this last mile until the end of this year. We are a partnership of eight organizations spread all across Europe and related with um, uh, the several networks of ESA. Um, the coordinator is here uh, as in Portugal, Instituto Pedro Nunes. We have Aerospace Well in France, Primatech uh, in Austria, uh, CESA in Germany, Czech Invest in the Czech Republic, Kim in Spain, uh, STFC in the UK and her heart in Belgium. So this is the partnership that is trying uh, and promoting the, the turning of space related ideas into viable businesses and promoting uh, entrepreneur uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs coming from space and non space sectors. So let's just give you a, a, an overview about entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs as a, a positioning, especially on early stage entrepreneurs and startups, so people that have uh, an idea or they are just starting their businesses uh, in, in the space sector. And we, we pick these startups and we, through the mentoring process, we give them business um, training, business mentoring, um, mentoring on, on technological issues and also on funding and through the network, uh, hopefully, you, 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 we will arrive on more uh, viable business cases. Uh, our core activities are, uh, for one hand, uh, the Astropreneur Space Startup Accelerator, and on the other hand, the European Space Network. Uh, the European Space Startup Accelerator is, uh, um, is or it is, is, is still ongoing, a mentoring program, and we have on board around 165 um, startups coming from 21 uh, European countries. And in average, we give uh, all of them uh, 25 hours of mentoring, as we said, on business, on technical and funding issues. To support that mentoring, we have a pool of 155 mentors, uh, experts coming from uh, 17 European uh, country, countries. And these are the persons that actually deliver the mentoring to the startups, and this is a very, very, very uh, valuable um, thing for the startups. Um, Complementing the uh, Astropreneur Space Startup Accelerator, we have also the European Space Network. So we gathered uh, um, more than 1,000 1, relevant stakeholders, uh, contacts, and we put it all together, uh, covering 20 countries in uh, a database that will be actually um, actionable and usable for um, supporting the startups and making the network uh, more effective. Our startups are coming uh, from mainly, as we said, uh, and according to our position, 
uh, from early stage academia. They are in a pre-incubation phase um, and they are many times re related with the ESAVICs and other incubators. Uh, of course, we have also some ESAVIC alumni, some prize winners, for instance, from Copernicus and uh, some coming from the industry. Uh, they are based especially uh, uh, on downstream applications on Earth observation and GNSS, but we also have some that are using um, patents that are being transferred from ESA, uh, and uh, some are uh, um, joining the new space. But we, we cover a very wide diversity of sectors, so we, we cannot say that they are only in one area or one sector. They are in covering many, many sectors from agriculture to mobility, smart cities, um, new spaces, as, as I told you, space debris. So lo lots of things that they are covering. So uh, as I said, we, are, we have 165 um, startups selected and participating in the, in the mentoring program, and they cover uh, 10 to 10 European countries. Uh, as you can see, uh, not only the partners countries are represented in the in this uh, in the group of startups, but but also um, many startups are coming from countries that are not uh, in our partnership, and that was one of the our our objectives. Uh, the pool of mentors. Okay, we have 155 mentors on board. Uh, this can still increase because we monthly accept other mentors, but of course we are on the on the last mile of the project and we cover um, 17 countries. So we, uh, it is not necessary that one startup, for instance, from uh, Germany, uh, the mentor can be uh, a Portuguese person or uh, a Greek person or, well, someone uh, that has the expertise that covers and matches the startup needs. That's how we do it. Uh, as I told you, we give each startup 25 hours of mentoring, uh, and the process is very easy. Startups applied on F6S, um, our, our partner on, on the selection pro process. Um, they were selected by a tender evaluation board after evaluating if they uh, fulfilled all the eligibility uh, criteria and they were assigned a project manager from the partnership. Uh, they would sign an agreement with the, the partner and then uh, the, the assigned project manager would perform a needs assessment and decided uh, the action plan, that is, uh, the needs assessment will identify the mentoring hours that were needed uh, and the action plan, uh, the, the, the mentors will be defined according to those needs and the mentors could be from business, technique or funding. Of course, you would complement the, the mentoring process with these trainings and the events that I'm also going to present you. Um, complementing uh, everything and of course related with the um, funding that we also uh, funding area where we also support our startups we have mapped uh, across Europe more than 400 funding instruments uh, and covering uh, as I told you 31 European countries uh, including the associated countries and the, the EU funding programs as a result of this mapping and as a result also uh, of the mentoring on the funding, uh, we have uh, applied, um, we have submitted more than 100 applications by 58 startups that we are on board with us. Uh, we have requested more than 23 million euros uh, and obtained it. So money that until now was obtained uh, by the startups uh, is nearly 6 million with 30 applications approved. This is uh, a really very, uh, very important result from our work that is tangible and that um, is very important for these startups that are mainly, as I told you, in early stages and they get the, this initial funding to support their activity. Um, also, we have uh, many uh, training available. 
uh, I say available because we are still are going to have some more, but uh, mainly all our previewed webinars were um, almost done. Uh, this is probably the last webinar that we are organizing uh, in this model, um, but you can um, access all the, the webinars that we have delivered. You have just to go to our, our website, to Astropreneur's website, to the training area, and you can uh, access uh, all the, the webinars and listen and view uh, the recordings. So it is very, very um, useful that you can use these resources for your own training if you don't have had the opportunity to join the webinars and uh, at live. Okay. Um, so uh, as I told you, we, we had uh, um, identified more than 1,000 contacts across Europe related with the uh, uh, stakeholders on the space, on space uh, areas, and we have created a database for that that is actionable and you you you, you will release it soon um, and it will be available for uh, everyone to use and um, access and find the right contacts and the right match for the, the needs. Uh, two main uh, uh, upcoming events that we are planning and, well, more than planning, that we are organizing that and they are uh, nearly um, ready to, to be uh, happening. One is Astropreneurs Mentoring Bootcamp. Uh, everyone is welcome to join this bootcamp. Re registration is already um, available and opened. I will leave the link uh, uh, on the chat box uh, in the end. Um, so this will be a, a whole week of activities. Uh, so we call it a boot camp and with uh, keynote speeches, talks, webinars, and also uh, the possibility of contacting uh, several mentors uh, using uh, a Slack facility and interacted, interacting with Zoom. We will have many um, space opportunities uh, available for you to check, um, relevant tools that you can use that are important for startups. So this is an open event, everyone can register. Uh, we will release soon the agenda and you can choose uh, what you can uh, from, from the agenda, what is more useful for, for you, for your startup and just register and, and join. We are, we are delighted to have you on this mentoring bootcamp. Um, after, and well, really to finalize the, 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 the project after this 36 uh, year, 36 months mission, we will organi organize a matchathon. So a matchathon is more dedicated to the startups that uh, we have on board of astropreneurs of our startups, and we are creating a big opportunity, a, new, a huge opportunity for them to connect with uh, corporates across Europe. So to get in touch with their potential customers and partners, investors and funding programs. And this will be re really a very good opportunity. This will happen on the 19th of November and on the 20th November, we uh, will have a, uh, the touchdown of the project with a more institutional closing ceremony, okay? And well, if you want to get in touch, um, with with uh, uh, astropreneurs with everything that is happening you just have to follow us on our social media uh, or if you need anything more specific drop us any an email for sp uh, space at ipn.pt uh, and uh, you are most welcome uh, and we will uh, reply to you for sure thank you for uh, being here uh, with us today we will get have an opportunity to to continue talking um, ahead in, in the webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Carla. Um, let's continue uh, with a high level overview uh, about uh, the space programs. Yes. Next one. Okay. Um, 
So uh, you probably are, have, it, uh, have a company or a startup or you're a project manager um, related to an accelerator program or an incubation. Um, and uh, herefore, you are probably known uh, with the five stages of creating a, a company. Um, so first, you have the first stage is uh, discovering an opportunity. Uh, then you are willing to set up a, a startup. You're growing. Uh, you have reached a certain maturity and then um, you have to maybe decline some parts of the company or you have to renew parts of the activities. But if we translate that uh, into um, a project management um, system, um, we are actually using in the space industry uh, uh, the TRL levels. Uh, so the TRL levels is conceived at NASA in uh, 1974 and has actually been used uh, when a technology has been developed. Um, and this is actually the basis to see in what kind of maturity or you can define uh, your goal. Okay. Um, we can also translate that uh, with different uh, funding opportunities, uh, programs that we are now going to um, uh, represent in during this webinar. Um, and depending on the different um, program that you're applying, uh, you're, you have to reach a certain uh, TRL level. Um, so we have, for example, Act in Space. Uh, so Act in Space is a hackathon. Uh, which is early stage. Yeah? So then we can actually say um, it's a discovering phase. Uh, uh, you don't have an ID, you would like to be inspired. Um, and this is actually the, the start where it all begins. Uh, after that, you have point IoT. Is actually, um, it really fits uh, for companies that have an ID and would like to set up a, a concept. Afterwards, you can also apply for Copernicus if um, you would like to use uh, uh, Copernicus data, or you can also apply for the point IoT. So this is actually the next step. And then you also have uh, yeah, programs that will support the growth and the scale up of your business. Otherwise, we also have the agency. Uh, we have uh, Mercedes Diaz uh, also uh, later on uh, in, during this webinar. And she will also uh, talk about the different um, opportunities that ESA offers. And so you can actually see that depending on the TRL level uh, of your company or the technology that you're going to develop, uh, you can apply for certain uh, programs. So um, there are many uh, other funding uh, opportunities to be discovered. Um, and I would like to refer to the European Space Network uh, dot EU. Uh, so this is actually a platform that has been uh, developed uh, and during the program Astrepreneurs. Um, Currently, it's still under development, um, but we would also put a page uh, where you can uh, have an overview of all the funding streams that is related to uh, the space industry, um, and where you can also find all the um, yeah all the um, all the links and uh, information that you uh, need to know. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, we would uh, address uh, active space. Uh, afterwards, we uh, head over to Point IoT, Copernicus, um, the European uh, space up programs. Then we have ESA with the patent office, and then there is a big, and then we have some space for the Q&A. So I would suggest if you have uh, questions and during this webinar, uh, please uh, type it in. You have uh, at your left, you have a Q&A panel um, so that we can address your questions uh, at the end of this mm -hmm. webinar. Okay, uh, so first of all, Act in Space. So um, Act in Space is an international hackathon um, organized and created and co-organized by KNES, ESA, and uh, the Aerospace uh, Valley. And the main idea is to really engage and to organize an event that happens all over the world, uh, and especially in Europe. Um, so I, the first hackathon was organized in 2016, uh, where 11 countries, different countries, has participated. Uh, so the idea is that every country can organize a hackathon. They receive guidelines uh, and they, the know-how how to organize a hackathon. They can invite um, parties uh, within their region uh, to actually participate. 
Um, later on in 2018, it was an extremely uh, increase of numbers, and so uh, 32 countries were participating, uh, 54 cities, and actually um, quite soon, uh, there will be, um, in November, there will be another action space um, hackathon uh, where 50 countries uh, will um, engage. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, please go to acting space where you can also find the, the, the most um, um, close uh, organization of the hackathon uh, so you can also uh, participate. Okay, so what is the goal? Uh, so, and during the 24 hour um, event, uh, you will be divided in teams. You can also enroll uh, with the team um, where we actually come together and we work with uh, patterns uh, that are used as inspiration. So, it's always linked with uh, space technology. Um, and during this uh, event, um, guest speakers will be there from a technical level, but also from a business perspective or design to actually tackle the mind and to make sure that at the end of this um, uh, hackathon, you will have an, uh, a new concept and perhaps also a, a starting point uh, to set up your own uh, company. Uh, so CNES has uh, many uh, patents uh, as inspiration. You can find some also on the internet um, or challenges if you're not uh, really um, have an idea how you can uh, tackle the mind. Uh, there are some examples. You can also uh, see the outcomes of the hackathon online. And it's really the first stage of creating a concept or an idea. Okay, so currently we have reached uh, 45 countries, um, over uh, uh, 76 uh, different cities, uh, and already 811 participants uh, were engaged in during these events. Okay. Um, I am not um, a part of the organization, uh, but if you're interested or you need some additional information, so you can go to uh, www.actingspace.org or you can contact uh, Mathilde Gobet or Pierre uh, uh, Duchange. Okay. Next one. All right. Uh, the second um, uh, program that was online is Astropreneurs. Um, so as Carla already has mentioned, uh, Astropreneurs is almost closing, uh, but however, you can still apply for the bootcamp or for the final event. Um, besides Astropreneurs, you also have Point IoT. Uh, so Point IoT is another uh, program supported uh, by the uh, European Commission, whereby we select uh, 10 companies that have an IoT and Galileo Fusion application. Um, and hereby we give them 80 hours of mentoring um, and um, additional program features. Um, we organize a uh, kickoff bootcamp in the beginning, uh, so where we define your challenges, and then we see how we can match those challenges uh, towards an, um, a solution, a perfect fit with the mentor. After, after the, the kickoff, we uh, start with a three month virtual sprint. Um, which can lead to you uh, towards a cash price of 20K. Okay, uh, so this is actually the high level overview. Uh, so the three months will be divided over three cycles. Uh, so let's say it's four weeks and every cycle will carry an, an, a specific objective. Your objectives that you can define at a challenge or a need uh, that you would like to address. Uh, we work with sprint monsters with which is your project um, manager. And we have a, a huge pool of mentors that will be able to add a solution to your need. Next one, thank you. Um, at the end, we organize uh, the demo day, uh, which is an, um, a demonstration day uh, in front of a jury where you can win a cash prize of 20K. But besides that, there will also be uh, investors attending um, and they can also uh, show interest in your concept and will probably uh, co-finance uh, your concept. So good luck. Um, for more details, uh, go to pointiot.eu 
uh, for more information, or you can always contact uh, uh, me, Louisa Lerwa. Um, my uh, contact details will be uh, presented at the end of this uh, webinar. So next one in line, is my colleague uh, Nicolas Helsen. He will explain um, about the uh, program objectives of Copernicus incubation. All right, so the Copernicus incubation program, um, the next couple of slides will offer a, a little bit of an introduction um, to what the program can offer you as startups using Earth observation uh, services or uh, more specifically Copernicus services. Um, the main purpose um, of the uh, of the incubation program is basically to help startups, and to do this, uh, one of the most important components is uh, the fifty thousand euros that you can receive to boost your startup. Um, this is equity free money, which is quite important and interesting as well. Um, and some of the conditions for the startups for getting into the program are uh, fivefold. One of them is, of course, to be able to use Copernicus data in your service. The second one is to have a commercial proposition, so we're not going to fund uh, research and development within the program. Um, a third one is to apply with a support program. So you have to apply uh, with an incubator or an accelerator. So the Copernicus incubation program itself is not an incubator per se, but it is a program that supports you while you are in an incubator of your choice. So this is quite important to know because it means that the application you do will have to be done with uh, an incubator and accelerator. Um, the fourth one is to be, of course, uh, in the EU. And um, yes, okay, <laughs> next slide then. Um, the funding support that you will get, so the 50,000 euros, 85% of that is basically what you receive because it is a partially co-funded program. So this means that the 50,000 euros um, is equity-free money, but it does mean that at the end of the ride, you have to prove that 58,000 euros, so the 15%, was at least co-funded by you. So eight, around 8,000 8, euros um, was co-funded uh, by the startup itself. So the maximum duration of this could be one year, but if let's say you want to uh, perform your incubation uh, in eight months, this is also possible. An important thing is that the pre-financing will be 50%, which means that you will receive 25,000 euros upfront and you will receive the remaining 25K at the end when you have done all of the expenses. So that this means that we offer an advance payment in the beginning but it is a reimbursement of your expenses at the end. So you will have to put up front the 25K for uh, the latter part. And next. So some of the application areas um, in which Copernicus could be interesting, of course, most of the applications that we receive uh, are based in environment or agriculture, but the real goal here is to think a little bit outside of the box and to go to other industries or sectors where Copernicus might be interesting. So you see some of them here uh, on the screen. Um, the goal is really to, to be able to showcase success stories um, of uh, new startups and new entities that use Copernicus in novel ways and that can basically show how Copernicus can be useful in a wide variety uh, of industries. So that's what we're aiming for. So one example could, of course, be, for instance, using Earth observation imagery, Copernicus fused perhaps with more uh, high definition imagery to, to look at uh, the amount of cars on uh, big uh, retail stores and buy this, basically provide information for stock market value predictions. Some companies are already doing this. So this is a, an innovative way of looking at Earth uh, observation imagery to, to develop new services. So here is a list of the uh, applications that have to be filled in. Now, the most important one here is actually number two uh, of the startup, which is the startup video pitch. All of the rest is you know, administrative information that needs to be filled in. But the thing that will really be valuable for the experts is your video pitch of five to seven minutes. So this is where you're supposed to explain what you're going to use in terms of Copernicus, what are you trying to develop, what's your business. So this is where um, you'll have to prove uh, to the experts that your business is uh, the one that should win. An example of this, 
could be that you just film yourself with a smartphone so it doesn't need to be uh, extremely high quality as long as we can hear you well i think the most important part is the sound and the articulation but as you can see here uh, it could be as simple as holding up a whiteboard um, and explaining uh, the different problems and solutions that you're trying to target so if you have a great video editor in your team to make a professional video knock yourself out it's great but it's also okay um, to make something with a smartphone as long as the message is clear um, concise and structured i would say so the eligible cost for the program most of the costs related to setting up a business or running one uh, are covered here so i think uh, it's quite important to stress that it's very wide of course not all expenses such as uh, interest payments or or etc will be accepted another interest uh, another important uh, aspect is that the office space will be reimbursed as long as it's not from the support program that is applying with you so if you're applying with your incubator and you are paying renting uh, fees to your incubator that is not an eligible cost within the program if you are applying with an incubator but your office space is being rented from someone else then that is uh, acceptable so that's an important distinction um, so as for the selection itself there will basically be two types of stages once you submit your application the experts will have a look at it and will based on this decide who gets to the final round which is a, a day of live pitches so if you pass the first stage, um, you will be invited to present your business and to pitch this um, to a select number of experts, of which uh, one is uh, Dimitris, who is now here as well in the, in the panel. Um, and so based off of this, then a final selection will be made for the ones uh, who are to receive the 50,000 euros. So the next deadline that we have is basically at the end of this month, and this will be the final one. It'll be uh, round nine. So we've already had eight uh, rounds uh, in the last two to, two to three years. Um, and so this will be basically be within uh, two to three weeks, the last opportunity to participate in Copernicus Incubation. Um, so this is basically the, the date to remember because there will not be uh, one after this. So some of the achievements, so we've already had 53 companies supported over uh, the past two years. So we have seven more to select in the final round. Um, and as you can see, most of the uh, startups have basically, first of all, been able to survive, which is quite uh, a good thing uh, for most of the startups that we've had since two years. Um, and most of them have also been able to hire new employees, have a big average revenue increase, uh, about a third of them have been able to, to get in touch with uh, private investors um, and most of them have also been able to export outside their country. So most of the startups have done quite well for themselves. So here I wanted to quickly go through some of the startups um, that were in our incubation program. So one of them is uh, Live EO, a German startup, one of the more successful ones who have also uh, established quite a bit of private investment, uh, multiple millions if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so they were basically doing vegetation monitoring close to railway tracks for safety management, but their big expertise was fusing Earth observation with artificial intelligence uh, to generate very useful information for their customers. So Ver Viridian Raven is from the Netherlands, and what they're doing is building a tool uh, to detect bark beetle activity. So they're using AO data and other signals uh, to detect uh, the health structure a forest and through this they can basically um, see what bark beetle activity is uh, is happening which is basically a great way for uh, forest and environmental managers to look at forest health and to improve this uh, deep blue globe is um, a company that was using sentinel data to optimize journey of ships so looking at weather data how are the waves uh, uh, responding in the ocean and how can we best uh, offer a new trajectory to um, you know big tankers or big maritime vessels to uh, to reduce time fuel and money on the routes that they have so also an interesting project um, sensor from the netherlands so also quite a successful company uh, really focused on uh, millimeter level deformations in civil infrastructure so they're using sentinel radar data 
to basically look at the subsidence um, on the ground and, and through this basically detect structural weaknesses. So also a, a company from the incubation program that has done quite well for themselves. Uh, and here is 3B. These, uh, this is a team from Italy. And uh, so what they are doing is basically building a, an IoT system for monitoring beehives onto which they, they layer Copernicus data, um, as you can see, to, to identify the most interesting flowering zones. So, I mean, all of the startups that I've just mentioned, the, the point is to show that Copernicus is being used for very different things. And so your business or your startup it, you might be able to use Copernicus in a way that you know would add value to whatever service you're already uh, trying to develop. Um, so we have, uh, of course, some communication channels. So as I said, uh, we are approaching the final round. So um, I mean, the, the last deadline is the 23rd of October. There is media material that you can look at uh, on the Copernicus website itself, which you can share, et cetera. Um, and so here as well, so this is promotion material that you can look at, some brochures. Perhaps two interesting things are uh, the Copernicus Business Design Coach Book. So it's one of the links in here, or the Methodology NABC booklet. These are tools which you can download and that basically help you also with um, challenging your business a little bit. Uh, how to develop new uh, EO services, how to fit this um, into a business. These are toolboxes which you can use uh, free of charge. So these I think are still interesting things. Um, and so that's about it. Uh, so thank you everyone. And of course, if there's questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, so now it's my turn again. Uh, as you know, this uh, webinar is uh, uh, especially dedicated to um, people coming from um, non-space skill lead incubators or, or business centers. And our aim was to uh, present uh, several uh, space uh, opportunities that EU has to uh, can offer and that you can profit. One of the things that I, I would probably most of you already know, but it's never uh, good to to it's good to remind that we now have with this new commission uh, a new DG, which is DG uh, Defense Industry and Space. So space has now uh, uh, its own presence in a director general from the commission, and this is the DG that take, that covers the, the EU space programs, so the, the Copernicus program, the Galileo system, and also EGNUS. So this is all under DG. Um, and there is a, a very important uh, paper, a uh, document from the EU that uh, we can, okay, uh, where can we, take uh, and understand better um, the European space strategy. Uh, and this, this, is, this document is available on, on the internet. You can access him. It's not a very long uh, uh, document. And it's very interesting to understand um, the, the backgrounds and the policy, the positioning of the European Commission towards uh, space and how they recognize the importance of space for Europe. Um, under this DG, uh, th there is, it was created uh, a new initiative uh, that is Cassini, Competitive Sp uh, Space Startups for Innovation. This is, a, uh, as they tell, a comprehensive, a comprehensive initiative um, that is managed by DGTV that it wants to um, expand the number of star uh, startups that use space tech. Uh, also increase their uh, opportunities and to, to succeed uh, on the techno, technical and management levels and also uh, uh, accelerate and secure their growth and scale up more on the funding aspects. Uh, these are the, this is the, the, the link for Cassini as you, you will be able to, to check uh, our presentation and all the links will be there for you to use and access. And in the next slide, you can see 
that Cassini uh, has two main aspects it's divided on one hand on the funding opportunities and on the other hand with information about the space based projects that the commission is funding uh, on the funding opportunities uh, on on the blue side you have uh, all the contests and opportunities like Galileo Incubation, Galileo Masters, Copernicus. So uh, you you have all the possibilities, uh, and that you previously previously saw uh, uh, how, how one of these uh, uh, funding opportunity works. So on Ca Galileo and Copernicus, you have several possibilities of getting funding for uh, the startups that. Uh, if you are a startup or if you are supporting startups in your community, uh, you can um, use these opportunities. On the other hand, the space based projects, uh, we have ongoing four um, space pro projects, astropreneurs, as I already presented you, space hub, go to space hubs and space end, and there will be two more uh, uh, coming soon. Uh, and I will just uh, pass through the, the those those uh, um, projects they are important because uh, if you are in an ecosystem you can either apply or you can forward your startups to um, join these uh, space projects in the next slide please we have uh, well we have entrepreneurs i've already presented all of entrepreneurs to you we had this space startup accelerator and as you, as you can see we could really support startups for not on or, or every country in europe but for many countries in europe so if you are from um, a business center a, a non-space dedicated uh, incubator uh, you can forward uh, uh, your startups for this kind of opportunities in the next slide we have another project that is still going on um, this project started a little bit after entrepreneurs is space up uh, their positioning is a little bit different they are more uh, oriented towards scale ups uh, but uh, nevertheless this is a very good opportunities and the scale ups can apply to the space academies where they will uh, receive um, many business services for free and profit for uh, a very good exposure um across uh, the events they are organized with and of course uh, they will be trained and supported during these uh, space academy events there will be a, a, a space academy um, year uh, you can apply you can check the the websites and uh, see where you can join the, the space academies if you have um, scale ups that uh, if you are a scale up or if you are supporting scale ups in the next slide we have also another opportunity in a project that is go to space ups um, this uh, project supports startups uh, mainly located in three hubs but well it is open uh, for for uh, all europe and not only for the startups but of course for the mentors um in astropreneurs we had a call for mentors and here on 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 um, go to space we also have uh, a call for mentors go to space or uh, is organizing hackathons uh, and it has two incubation programs one based here in ipn in Coimbra, portugal and, and another one in uh, uh, tallinn estonia uh, and um, uh, it has also uh, an acceleration program based in Madrid. Mostly the programs now are running uh, online. Uh, you can check the website and see the conditions if you can apply or forward your startups from your uh, ecosystem to apply. In the next slide, we have another um, project that is a Space Endeavor Space Up. Um, this is based also in Madrid. It has also uh, um, open a call for for applicants for a design studio uh, and uh, a call for mentors. And uh, you can you can uh, um, search here in the website again if you can uh, apply directly as a startup or as a mentor. And this, these are uh, for what I wanted to share with you opportunities that you, you you can get in touch and know uh, better and 
this is the way that we are sharing where to search for these opportunities. Next slide, please. So there are not only these space-based programs, there are other opportunities. Uh, and uh, I would like to, to share with you, please, in the next slide, um, another program, not uh, in H2020. So the other, the other four uh, projects that I've presented you are on H2020. This is on Interreg Sudway. It's also uh, uh, an acceleration program uh, for um, well, small SMEs that use uh, Earth, Earth observation, and uh, it's also an opportunity that you can and should check if you are eligible for. In the next slide, uh, we'll have um, finally uh, another another project under COSM uh, funding. Uh, one of our partners, Aerospace Valley, is the is in the partnership. Uh, I leave you here the 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 link uh, to check if you are eligible. So as you can see, um, there are many programs under the EU uh, that support uh, projects that deal with space and can support the space startups. Uh, and these are the many, several of the many opportunities that you can profit for. In the next slide, I will just, uh, in, in very, very, very short um, words, uh, show you uh, how is space uh, foreseen in Horizon Europe. As you, as you know, um, H20 uh, um, is, is uh, now entering the last phase. We have a new commission, we have a new funding period starting. Uh, this, is the, the, this is the place where to, to find the information about Horizon Europe. So the next research and innovation framework program for the next years. Uh, they have a dedicated uh, website and also there is information uh, in the European Innovation Council. You can check uh, the budget uh, for the future of Europe and you can well get this information to understand better how uh, the EU funding, namely the research and innovation funding works. In the next slide, um, I leave you. There are many presentations available in the internet, so um, I leave you just here the link for one of them that explains in detail how uh, Horizon Europe uh, will be organized. Uh, in the next slide, uh, 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 I will show you uh, uh, an overview of this preliminary structure of Horizon Europe divided in three pillars uh, and space appears on the second pillar under the clusters area so and it is related with digital industry and space so this is where um, space directly appears nevertheless i would like to stress that even on the other areas of horizon europe space can be present because space can space tech can be used uh, in many areas for instance in health uh, in climate, so uh, if you are if you are not in a call specially dedicated uh, um, for space, but you are in another cluster, uh, maybe your space startups can also apply because they have uh, this different uh, technology that they are using. This is a huge factor uh, that um, gives value to 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 your ecosystem. Okay, so in the next slide. Um, just to share with you that under this uh, digital uh, cluster three digital and industry intervention areas, uh, the, space, the, the space broad lines are related, of course, with um, the systems of positioning, Galileo and, and EGNOS, Earth observation with Copernicus, um, also stressing the space situational awareness, sec securing satellite communications for the EU governance, of course, um, the use of space te techno technologies as a support to EU global competitiveness and independence from critical components, and of course, the, uh, uh, the area of space science and exploration. And please, next slide. Uh, so this is just what I was aiming to share with you, that there are several uh, opportunities 
uh, that you as a startup or as a community manager in your uh, ecosystem, startup uh, ecosystem, you can access the EU and check uh, the many opportunities for supporting your startups. So from my side uh, is everything I can pass to the next presenter. Well, thanks very much, Carla, um, uh, and thanks uh, to to the Astropreneurs Consortium to for inviting uh, Isa to be here uh, present at this webinar. Um, maybe to introduce myself, uh, my name is Mercedes Sanchez Alvarez, uh, and I work at the Technology Transfer and Patent Office of the of the agency. My role is to, I'm responsible for the promotion of the ESA patents portfolio for the use by the space industry and the non-space industry, and also responsible for um, following some of the technology transfer projects that we, have, we are funding currently um, within ESA. So today I would like to give you a sort of a view of the, our activities and uh, some funding opportunities and technology support that you can get um, from, from us. So uh, if we can go to the next slide, please, thanks. Um, so basically that's what we do. We forge links uh, between the space sector and the rest of the industry uh, in order to find uh, new homes for ESA's uh, innovations. So the idea that is that we inspire novel businesses opportunities um, products or services um, so basically we support transfer from space okay. when we speak about technology transfer um, we mean uh, hardware or software um, uh, know-how but we don't uh, talk about uh, data coming from satellites, so Earth observation data or uh, navigation data. There are other programs in the agency that um, relate about that, that fund uh, opportunities on this. So basically, why uh, do we exist as an office at the agency? Um, it's because the ESA really believes that the European space industry should be at the forefront of innovation to solve problems also on Earth. And by, by supporting the, the industry, uh, we increase the returns on, on the public investments uh, uh, that initially gave rise to these technologies. Um, so, so we make eventually the, the European industry more competitive. It all starts uh, for us with the technical uh, solutions that are born uh, for space. Um, our technology transfer function begins with the identification of technologies that might be possible for transfer that arise from uh, R&D contracts or can be also ESA inventions made by our ESA staff or contractors. Um, and then we also make uh, contact with space companies interested in commercializing their capabilities beyond the space uh, field. For us, then the next step is to progressively de-risk uh, these technologies for participating uh, companies through the performance of feasibility studies, uh, proof of concept of operational demonstrators. So give them more confidence to continue with the technology transfer process. And then we also give them access to technical expertise from uh, the e inventors or from um, uh, experts within the agency in particular fields of applications. Uh, last, the agency, uh, that, as I said, I, can, I will speak a bit later about that, but it's available for the use for, by, uh, for space and non-space applications, and we have a very attractive uh, policy for um, licensing policy for its use. We fund uh, technology transfer de risk in, in three stages, uh, feasibility study, proof of concept, and demonstrator. So the idea is to increase the TRL of the technology for the new application uh, while we are increasing uh, the opportunities for uh, commercialization of the technology and we are um, uh, reducing the risk for its implementation. So we are basically in this uh, orange area, but of course then we know there is 
much more uh, later on once the, te the technology is uh, ready for operational environments. Of course, the, then the, we understand the company's increasing implementation um, uh, to scale up the in industrialization or market expansion. So the idea for us is really to support the base uh, of the technology uh, development at the beginning so that you can get uh, quicker to the next uh, stages. So I will now uh, explain a little bit how this um, scheme works because as I said, it's in three stages, but it doesn't mean that you need to do the three of them with the agency. So you can apply to each of them depending on the level of maturity uh, you're at so that uh, as long as you can prove it. The first um, uh, stage uh, of funding is a, is a feasibility study. Uh, from a feasibility study, we the starting point is, is really when we have a, um, an evidence that uh, for a terrestrial application and we've seen there is some interest for a, of, for a company. Uh, the funding is, is low because it's a paper study, it's, a, it's 10K, and the idea is to, to have uh, done it in around one, uh, one month. Uh, the, this funding is an open call. Uh, you can uh, get more information at uh, OSIP, which is the Open Space Innovation Platform of the agency at uh, um, ideas.isa.int. Um, and uh, at the end of, uh, of the feasibility study, what we'd like to see is a value proposition and a conceptual uh, design for the solution, which has to be validated already by one, one user and also a market study, because uh, also I heard it uh, before from uh, the Copernicus program, we want to fund uh, technology applications, so we don't fund R&D uh, programs. Maybe to illustrate a little bit um, uh, how can a feasibility study work, I can uh, give you an example. If you, This is an example of um, a feasibility study that was funded uh, in the call of last year. So there is a company, a Spanish company, is called CITD, and they uh, they develop a bulkhead, uh, which is basically a membrane to see to separate uh, different pressures within the compartments of the um, Ariane 5 launcher, uh, basically for security purposes. And they thought that this uh, membrane, this bulkhead, could be used as well. In, uh, in airplanes, as you can see on the right-hand side of, um, of the slide, at the back or at the rear of the plane, there is a firewall uh, to protect from the engine, engine that is at the back. And then this firewall uh, can be replaced by this technology developed by um, CITD. So that's the idea they, they came up with. So they developed a feasibility study with the agency um, and they were able to come up with these uh, value propositions uh, and a conceptual design because it has the benefits that you can build it in one piece um, and you can save a lot of mass and, uh, and space and it can even uh, manage to get one more uh, row line in its plane, which of course will increase uh, a lot the the gain for for the airliner in this case they are doing it with airbus and it was a successful feasibility study they applied for the next stage which i, which I will explain uh, now and they are now actually manufacturing the the part in in real size to prove that it it can be um, it can work in the plane okay the next the next stage in the um, in the funding is, is the proof of concept. So we the starting point is the feasibility study. And then um, what we want to see is, is uh, there is a prototype built uh, in a relevant environment. And at the end, we, we want to see as well a, a business model uh, that validates the, the, the solution. So the funding for this one is, is uh, 50K. We expect the work to be developed in uh, approximately six months. 
and um, the the call the call for this year is is closed now, but we are expecting to open it uh, next year at the beginning of the year, um, and the call will be open through the usual channels in in Emits for the agency. And again, I wanted to give you an example for uh, to illustrate a little bit um, how the proof of concept work, and we can see it in the next slide. Which is um, it's a company that is called Mecano ID. It's a French company. Um, they develop uh, struts, very very uh, stable, which in space are used to uh, in the structures that support the deployable reflectors. So um, these uh, these stru struts or these tubes have to be very very stable. And they they thought uh, in discussion with uh, with the end user that this could have applications in metrology because they also use uh, very very stable tubes to have very accurate uh, measurements so they applied for the call last year in 2019 and um, and they were able to to manufacture some tubes of course one of the challenges they had is that for space they they had to build the tubes manually uh because the the number of units they have to produce is very low but if they want to compete on the commercial markets uh, on earth then they have to develop something uh, automatic so that's what they did and they they were able to be quite uh, successful with this proof of concept which actually just finished um uh two weeks ago and they've been able to prove that the, these tubes are also very stable and they have been um, manufactured by an automated fi fiber placement uh, system. So, um, so this is an example of how this technology used for the reflectors could be used also for metrology applications. Next slide is in the, the next step on the um, funding is a demonstration. Uh, this has a higher funding, is 150k. We expect uh, the work to be done in maximum one year time. And at the end, what we like to see is a prototype, uh, which is set up in the operational environment uh, and prove that it works. And also, we would like to see the business implementation plan. So we don't have examples yet because we launched the call for the first time this year. And uh, we are the projects are actually starting now. So hopefully, if we have uh, a webinar, follow up a webinar of this one, I can show you some results in the next time. As I said, we are also the patents uh, office of the agency. So we are responsible for the management of all the patents made by our ISA staff. Um, and we make them available for commercialization. So if you go to isa.int slash IP, you can have them all there. Um, they are classified by a field of application. So you will be able to see them all there. We have a bit of backlog of them. So if you're looking for something specific and you cannot find them, you can always contact us and we can see if there's something um, that is not made public yet. This is um, an overview of the type of inventions we have in the portfolio. As you can see, mostly on the blue or dark blue and uh, green, uh, most of the chunk of the portfolio relates to um, ICT technologies or so the te telecommunication part, because of course it's the more commercial. But we've seen um, an increase in other fields of applications, so materials with all the advanced and uh, additive manufacturing technologies. And also uh, some uh, new patents as well about uh, space debris because of the new uh, regulation for space uh, debris. So, uh, that's a bit what I mentioned before. We have uh, what we believe it's an attractive uh, licensing policy for for the industry. So for the industry within the ISA member states, uh, we offer um, uh, non-exclusive free of charge uh, uh, licenses for when the use is for space. And when it's for non-space applications, we offer the patents under favorable conditions. When uh, we talk about um, the industry outside the member states, then uh, we offer the patents under non-exclusive and market um, conditions. 
And Luisa was mentioning before that uh, there is acting space. Uh, actually, one of the way we are promoting the patents is through acting space. So if uh, we have posted this year uh, for this edition six uh, challenges based on ESA patents. So I encourage you to go to the website and, and the acting space website, uh, website and check the challenges and see if there's something that uh, kind of be of interest, not only for, from ESA, but also for the other partners. This is, uh, I wanted also to illustrate uh, an example of a transfer of a patent that is, um, was developed by one of the inventors in the agency. Um, it's a terahertz camera uh, that can be used, or it was developed um, in space because you can use it to analyze atmospheres of the planets and uh, many properties of the um, atmosphere. So, it's been used by a company called Thrubision because this uh, camera has, I mean, these terahertz waves have the property to see uh, through uh, clothes or even uh, yeah, paper or even walls if they are not too thick. So it's been used uh, by security screening. So they are uh, actually quite successful. They've developed a compact uh, portable uh, camera able to perform also at room temperature. And they got awarded recently or last year um, a contract to screen the passengers in Los Angeles Metro. Uh, and uh, we know they have increased a lot their business now due to the COVID uh, crisis as well. So, um, so that's a bit a summary of our activities. Um, Please, we are a support office of the agency, so we are here to help you. Please contact us if you have a particular technology need, then we can see if there's some space technology which might meet your requirements. If you're also interested in any of the patents uh, that are in our portfolio, or come to us if you're looking uh, for funding, uh, as I explained before. So thank you very much. If are, there are any questions, I can also take them. Uh, later, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mercedes. It was great to hear all about your uh, insights about ESA and the opportunities that um, can are available for for uh, the startups and also for for the incubators that are supporting the the, the, the startups. So we are now moving to 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 another part uh, uh, of the webinar. Uh, we now have with us two guests from from Greece that are uh, going to share with the audience well their experience and their views about uh, uh, the space startup uh, ecosystem, mainly based on, on Greece, and also about their effort and steps then in in supporting the space startups uh, uh, in in their country. Um, Luisa, uh, are you, we are going to do this in, in two, with two, two voices. Me and Luisa, we are going to interview um, Dimitris and, and Georges. Luisa, do you want to, to start, please? Um, yes, hi. Um, so um, I'm actually wondering if uh, both uh, uh, parties can uh, briefly introduce themselves. Sure. Um... I, I, I will go first. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. So, I'm Dimitris. Um, I'm based in Athens, and uh, I have a background in space actually uh, for quite some time. Um, before, I was mostly working in business development for uh, large and medium-sized companies, uh, mostly actually in export. So I will. I was trying to help those companies exporting uh, space technology out of EU. And uh, for the last five years, actually, I was involved in the startups. Uh, so I'm, I'm a quite a rookie in the startup uh, ecosystem. And, uh, and actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going more and more you know, in depth, and I like very much dealing with teams. And uh, as a matter of fact, so I'm, a, I'm an advisor to startup. I'm also an evaluator in some of the programs uh, that uh, you mentioned. So I, I, I see that I have some, some people that I know uh, here and some friends 
uh, all across EU, and also I'm an angel investor uh, to some startups, uh, not limited to space, but in general in a deep technology. Okay, thank you. Um, Grigios, um, can you um, give us a two minutes uh, pitch about yourself and your activities? Hello, uh, can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, my name is, uh, let's say, George for easy, for, for being easy. George on this, I'm, I'm based in Athens. I'm the head of unit uh, in Praxi Network, uh, uh, which is called Innovation in SMEs. So I'm, I'm basically dealing with smaller uh, technology-oriented, innovation-oriented uh, companies, both startups and scale-ups, uh, and uh, have been consulting them for uh, uh, matters related to access to finance, innovation management, IPR, and technology transfer. Uh, I've been doing this for the past uh, six years uh, while in Pax Network, while for my background was again in, in science and science management. Um, I've been uh, the head of unit uh, since 2018, and I'm currently also the national contact point for uh, Horizon 2020 uh, program for SMEs, uh, which is uh, one of the, the basic uh, and, and most valuable tools that the European Commission has for funding innovative SMEs that want to go. Um, we are uh, pretty much a, a technology-oriented uh, organization. Beneath Praxi Network, there is Forth, which is one of the largest research organization uh, and technology organizations in Greece. And Praxi Network uh, basically uh, is a component which deals with technology transfer and innovation management. Okay, so thank you so much, Georges and, and Dimitris, for, for, for your introduction. I, I will start uh, asking some, some questions to, to Georges. So um, can you share a little bit with us um, how is the space uh, ecosystem in, in Greece? What, what, what can you say uh, about its main features? How, how can you, what can you tell it? Uh, how is going on the space ecosystem? related with the startups and uh, everything else in Greece. Right, so, so space is one of the um, domains uh, for companies in Greece that uh, you wouldn't expect it to be um, uh, growing, but actually it, it's, it's really uh, active and it's really vibrant and has been for a long time. Uh, the ecosystem, um, it has grown because there are key elements here that have led to this. Uh, the first and foremost is that we have been members of ESA since 2005. Uh, uh, Greece, uh, through European programs and mainly Horizon 2020, uh, has quite a lot of success both for SMEs and research organizations in space-related work programs. So uh, Greece, within Horizon 2020, has managed to secure more than 16 million people. Uh, related to, to space research and space R&D activities. Uh, there are a lot of companies, uh, mainly uh, startups, dealing with space in various fields like telecommunications, electronics, defense, um, and uh, software for space applications. Uh, we have an association of space um, uh, enterprises with 59 members and we sorry with 42 members and a cluster for space uh, entities with uh, 59 members uh, at the same time we we also at prax Net network host Co a copernicus relay center and uh, we're also the greek national point, contact point for space for, for europeans so uh, there are ingredients that help this ecosystem in greece uh, survive and thrive in some cases. Uh, we're not still there yet so as to, 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 to say that the ecosystem is growing very fast, but the, it is there and it, it has some kind of support, not, not the support it really needs at this point, but uh, it's, it's definitely there and the basis are there for this. 
Okay, so that, that, that precisely leads to, 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 to the next question. Um, you say the support is not still there, you, still, you, you, you need more. What are the, the really the, the conditions that you are looking for to make the, uh, the, Greece, the, the Greek ecosystem uh, grow? What steps are you wanting to give to make it grow? Right, so so it, it has only been a few years since since space has become a, a national uh, part of, of the of the national strategy for R and D, uh, and we have a space agency uh, regarding uh, such issues. So there, there are further steps to be taken. We, we still do not have uh, an incubator directed uh, and dedicated only to space, uh, which would also help. Uh, um, Technology transfer from universities into companies into into to spin-offs that could really launch new SMEs in space. Uh, we still lack dedica dedicated financial instruments from from a national contact, uh, from a national point of view to support companies uh, that deal with space and they have to compete in parallel with other fields. Uh, so we need dedicated tools for that. And uh, we definitely need other financial uh, instruments, which means private investors with a background knowledge in space that can help out. We need uh, um, uh, banks and, and financial intermediaries supporting uh, startup companies in, in dealing with space and space applications. And of course, we need a technology transfer um, um, organization like Praxi uh, to to uh, dedicate uh, teams towards space. Of course, we have to to start making use uh, the programs that, that were presented today here, and they are all uh, very applicable. And a lot of companies will find them uh, particularly interesting and particularly helpful uh, for growth. Uh, and uh, we need to start connecting them uh, at early stages uh, with such kind of initiatives. Uh, the recently launched as a big tender for Greece is going to be uh, a milestone in, in the, the ways towards a more competitive uh, space ecosystem in Greece. And hopefully with uh, some complementary financial instruments from, from, from the government, uh, it, will, it will make the case uh, for this new area to, to expand even further. Okay, so uh, even if you are not yet there, you have a very clear strategy about the the the, the steps that are needed to to be taken. Okay, Luisa, do you want to take now your turn with Dimitris, please? Luisa, I'm sorry. Yeah, do you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, what do you think about the opportunities uh, that we have shared during the webinar? Do you have any um, suggestion, uh, advice? Right. Um, yeah. First of all, I think that you know to, to wrap up. I think that this project is uh, is very nice because you know. Uh, the information is is right and left a bit. Uh, sometimes you know it's not the all information in one place. So th I think this this project between other things is very valuable. You know to connect the dots, and um, you know you, you also have shown some nice diagrams. You know uh, to matching let's say every uh, you know opportunity according to the TRL level, uh, even though you know it doesn't correspond. Uh, uh, you know, 100% because some, you know, less mature or more mature companies sometimes they apply for you know higher or 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 or, or lower TRL. Uh, so, no, this this I think is a very good matrix and a very very good synthesis of what exists. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a, 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 as a statement, you know, bef before I, I answer to your question. Uh, I'm I'm also I have the privilege also to be quite close to the DG Defis. Uh, since I'm helping the commission there with the Copernicus Master, and um, so I'm aware about the Cassini program, which is also very nice, uh, and 
this is also in the in the in the same in the same line you know and what i can also share and i think that you are aware uh, but it's, it's good also for the audience is that i think that you know the european commission and like isa of course uh, but the european commission too you know they consider i will say the role of startups uh, more and more uh, important in the ecosystem mm -hmm. and and especially in the space ecosystem so this is this is quite clear uh, from all over and uh, you know this and the people that you know are experienced in r and d programs etc this was not the case let's say 10 years ago you know 10 years ago let's say the, the play was between research centers universities and some industries so it was very difficult for a startup uh, to get funded and you know and to go through and make all this a path of technology development product development and then also go to market which is mm -hmm. actually the the final aim so i have the chance to be uh, involved in, in in through several you know different role in, in in programs so for instance i'm a judge uh in copernicus incubator i'm a mentor in copernicus evaluator i'm also evaluator in copernicus master i have been evaluator in copernicus hackathon uh, i'm aware about uh, the programs like act in space and go to space so all those are are definitely a set of valuable tools and i hope that this will be enriched even you know even more in the future i'm, I'm quite sure uh, but then you know the, the then the ball is in the hand of the startup or of the team to you know to make a good use and yeah. um, myself i have you know i i think i have evaluated maybe a few thousands of uh, space startups uh, uh, i mean personally um you know uh, you, you can see clearly and this is kind of suggestion that you know there are let's say teams that um they are just you know try to accumulate a bit the funding but mm -hmm. without you know a clear scope and there are some startups that you know have a more focused uh, approach and then you, you can see that those you know they have a, like a really uh, we can see some progress, and so th this gives a lot of optimism. So it's it's perfect, I guess, that we are now at this timing, uh, even for yes, for countries uh, as Greece, as uh, George said, the timing is great. But also for all the other European countries, uh, if a startup wants to really, you mm -hmm. know, to, to try to to make something there, there are you know all the tools, everything. ISA has also this valuable you know uh, technology transfer office. And the funding mechanisms, the commission too, and all those tools and all those people like you that are working, you know, on that ecosystem. So the timing is perfect, um, you know. But then, I guess, you know, the most successful will be the ones that will not only focus on the technology side, but on the market side. And I guess this is where the most of difficulty comes usually, because we have great engineers, of course, and scientists, but the market should follow. Yeah. Um, in okay, thank you. Um, so today's webinar is actually an overview of different programs uh, for all Europe. But if we zoom into Greece, uh, and especially as a business developer, um, can you can you pitch or can you uh, uh, mention in what kind of sectors the Greek uh, space startups are stronger uh, compared to to other um, to other startups? Sure. Sure. So that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I'm not very well aware of, uh, let's say, the, uh, the startups in space. And now th those are, are are coming up now, and I guess there is a big uh, structure will help uh, mm -hmm. bring them on surface. But in general, in, in the ecosystem uh, which George described a bit, you know, um, I will say that one one general but still strong pillar that we have here is uh, is the science the base of science we have very good universities uh, really good so the, the the top students from those universities you know usually they go uh, then of course they go abroad which is a problem i guess and this is common to maybe other countries uh, i guess here you know then they go to stanford mit uh, and this kind of universities you know and they excel so we we have a very good science base um i would say we don't have we don't have a very traditional industrial background so in hardware um we have we have a bit in in optics you know and remote sensing but still 
Um, usually it is not manufactured here, you know, it's just like fabless uh, and this kind of stuff. We have uh, software guys that are quite good, but I will say that one of the, to me, uh, one of the key um, assets that we have is deep technology and, and science that has to be um, translated in, into a technology products. But the, the basis of science is really good. But, you know, as in, in, in many countries, usually it, it uh, remains, you know, more on R&D and science side. But if this potential uh, could be, you know, driven to a more uh, product and market side, I'm sure that we will see, you know, great, great startups. So I'm looking forward to, you know, to see this happen and to, to, to try to contribute to make this happen too. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, so this also means that uh, it's a great opportunity to collaborate with uh, Greek startups, eh? as I can hear. Um, okay, uh, Karna, uh, those yes. were my questions. Uh, maybe you have uh, additional questions uh, for... Well, uh, our actually... Yes, Louise. Actually, our 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 invite is already. The final question would be for both. Uh, how 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 important are are the opportunities that that we have shared with your with the audience? But you have already uh, replied to to and answered to the question. So I would give you a uh, uh, thirty seconds open mic uh, just to 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 a final message to our audience, Georges. Uh, final message to the audience. Yeah, uh, we are really, really eager to, to work with you uh, on both on, on projects and connect with uh, other SMEs. I mean, uh, we are um, a small growing community and we would really like to, to start establishing connections with, with other startups in space uh, throughout Europe. So uh, at any opportunities, please uh, keep us in mind. Uh, and we'll be delighted to, to, to bring uh, and uh, present to you uh, cases, good cases of startups uh, from Greece. Thank you so much. Dimitris, 30 seconds to finalize. All right. Um, thank you very much for this. So my silver line there is for all the startups that are in this, uh, you know, great space or related to space sector, uh, I believe the key is to go and ask the market. Don't be afraid also, and even though you are not entrepreneurs, maybe you are engineers or scientists, but go and ask the market. There is a big part of the market that is untackled, even after 30, 40 years that space exists, and before there were big companies, but now there is a big market share for small companies. So get out of the room and ask prospects, customers, you know, get the feeling of the market. Thank you. Thank you so much, Giorgio and Dimitris. It was really helpful for us and hopefully for the audience to uh, get in touch with your views and know a little bit more about uh, the Greek space ecosystem. We, we wish you all the best personally and of course for for your institutions and the, for, for the, the space sector. And definitely uh, there is space for everyone. Uh, and Luisa, let's go to finalize with the Q&A with the audience. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, meanwhile, I have received a couple of questions. Uh, so the first one is um, related to, to the European Space uh, Network. Um, the question is actually when it will be exactly released. Um, I can uh, say that uh, currently we are um, developing uh, the website based on the needs of the end users um, and we will um, publish them, release them uh, and during the final event of Astrapreneurs which will be the middle of um, uh, November. Um, in a couple of weeks, uh, in two weeks, uh, you will also be able to register as a space company or as a non-space company uh, where you can also uh, demonstrate your uh, technology needs uh, or challenges um, or the technologies that you're offering. Uh, so it will be a very wide uh, portal uh, where the main aim is to um, um, increase um, business uh, between space to space and space to non-space. Um, yes. Um, so 
the link um, and further updates related to this network uh, will be also published on the website of Astropreneurs. Okay, uh, then the next one, um, let me see, is, uh, yeah, so the uh, it's about the presentation uh, of this video. Um, so after the acceptance of all the um, uh, speakers, uh, we will uh, publish uh, the presentation slash video online. Uh, so you can rewatch uh, it via the entrepreneurs uh, website or uh, via YouTube. If you uh, um, type in entrepreneurs, you can also uh, see the overview of all the webinars that has been organized already, um, which might be interested because uh, other funding um, programs are also represented over there. Um, I think this is a question for uh, Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes, are you? Do you hear me? Yes, I'm. See, I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. I have a question uh, for you. Um, there is one of the participants that uh, have a question about the non-exclusive license policy. Um, can you tell more about that? Uh, what is the reason behind this? Well, the, the reason behind the, the non-exclusive licensing policies um, that we want, I mean, we are a public organization and uh, we are meant to make uh, the technology available to as many um, companies as possible. So that's the reason uh, behind um, that. We are trying to elaborate a partial exclusivity licensing policy. Uh, mm -hmm. um, under certain circumstances, but that's something that is still in the making and um, does not work applies uh, for the moment. But it's we understand that it's uh, maybe less attractive for some companies, so that's why we are trying to find a way to overcome this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there is also another question. Uh, it seems that uh, uh, many of the the audience are interested for uh, the. Uh, they would like to apply for a feasibility study. Um, where can they see additional information? How how can we communicate uh, uh, this uh, towards the audience? So the, um, the link to the feasibility study. Maybe I can put it in the chat. Is um, the website mm -hmm. is ideas. Um, dot isa dot int. So there is an open channel um, that is specifically for uh, feasibility studies, uh, technology transfer feasibility studies. So you will find all the information there. But of course, you can always contact me if there is something that is not clear. Yeah, I, um, I put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it okay if we also share uh, this link uh, on the website of Astropreneurs? Uh, so that uh, all the uh, participants can also um, reconnect uh, via the website. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mercedes. Um, meanwhile, I have uh, received another question uh, for uh, Nicola um, related to the Copernicus Accelerator incubation. Um, can you tell us about the deadline, um, the next deadline for uh, Copernicus? Okay, so um, as I um, had shown in the presentation, the next deadline will be on the 23rd um, of October. So you still have around two, three weeks um, to register and to, and to upload uh, all of the uh, the application files. So the, the 23rd um, at around 5 p.m. is when we will close um, the applications. So make sure to um, to to really send everything before that. You can also upload and apply beforehand of course so um, the sooner the better i would say okay great thank you uh, and then the last question uh this one is for carla um yes. carla yes, yeah. yes okay thank you um one of the question is um the next entrepreneur startup extends uh, acceptance quarterly evaluation per period would be held when Oh, well, unfortunately, our open call is now closed. So as I told you, the project is entering the the, the last uh, last month. Uh, we have uh, cl closed our call for startups uh, and we are not no longer accepting 
startups for our mentoring program. Um, so we have run the, the project for uh, three years and uh, well the last batch was accepted in uh, September I think and we cannot uh, open another another cohort and uh, well we will keep these uh, 165 startups and hopefully uh, you can apply to other the other uh, H2020 programs that uh, have now open calls. That would be my suggestion, okay? Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, and do you think that there will be an entrepreneur 2.0? Oh, that would be a very, very, very good idea. We are now, well, we are now focusing on, in finalizing this uh, uh, first edition. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, who knows if uh, in the next uh, in uh, round of calls uh, the, the planets will align among the <laughs> all. We can, uh, as a partnership, apply again and uh, go for the second episode of entrepreneurs. That would be a great uh, happening, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And I assume that it will be uh, also uh, communicated via the the network. Uh, uh, to make sure that everybody uh, receives an update on uh, on the potential entrepreneurs 2.0. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely, Louisa. Okay, um, so that was it. Um, so I think we can uh, close and uh, end this uh, um, webinar. I would like to thank all the speakers um, for your particip participation and engagement, and as well to all the um, uh, listeners. Um, so if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, and after the approval of all speakers, you can re-listen uh, to this uh, recorded uh, webinar um, in a week. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, have a nice day further. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.